but we are talking revenue, profit, important things. Yes. We're talking not leaving money on the table. We're talking about how to think about these things. So um excited for this. Oh, thanks, Shante. <laughs> Kate loves a good rate chair. Good. Okay. You guys like it. Good, good. I won't hold back too much then. Um, Michelle says the hair does not translate from camera to Zoom for what it's worth. Right? I agree. I don't know what is going on with that. Um, thank God Jess sent me stuff for like all these like postpartum hairs because I just have like this giant chunk of them right now and they just like like to stick out like that so um they're back but we'll see how long they stay back <laughs> um but yeah it does not translate um oh good okay good you guys like the rager I feel better now I was like oh I think it's a little too much <laughs> so now I feel much better okay so something that feels really important to start with here, which like, this is obvious, but also needs to be said, um, is that the reason we're going to talk about this is because revenue is nothing without profit. Like, duh, but also like, I feel like in our space, we have to say that, um, profit is what changes your life in your business, right? Like revenue just sounds good or looks good or whatever, but profit is literally the thing that changes the game in business. It's what changes how you get to function in, in your life, in the real world, in the, in the ways you're showing up outside of the like little microcosm that is business. And so I feel like everything in our space is about revenue, revenue, revenue. And don't get me wrong. Like I share my revenue. I share clients revenue. I'm excited about revenue. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we're not also looking at profit, you're not going to feel the effects of that, right? Like you can make, a, I, I literally know some of this has happened to, um, you can literally make a hundred K in revenue and have zero profit off of that launch, depending on what you spent. So it's like, who, who cares? Do you really want to do the work for that hundred K if you're going to make nothing out of it? So that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit more today is like how to think about that. I want to talk about how to use data to help you with that, because obviously that's something I'm very passionate about. And I want to talk about what this could look like in your business. So sometimes it really is about thinking about how do we make more? It's not always about how do we lower expenses, but sometimes it is about how do we lower expenses? And I think that's also a conversation that kind of never happens in our space. It's like, only how do I make more? How do I make more? How do I make more? But what actually happens because of that and like, I think it's like the, how shall I say, like the, like the dark underbelly of our space sometimes is that what happens for a lot of people is they make a certain amount and then they want to make more. And so they funnel all the money they made back into the business to ideally help them make more. And so it's like it comes in, but then it's always going right back into the business. And so, yes, they might make more over time, but they're zeroing out constantly or maybe even going negative sometimes in the hope of making more, right? But it's like, what What if you like, you know, had some of the fruits of the labor that you've already put in? So I feel like that dark undercurrent really is that so many people are making revenue and not making profit. And so- Again, not to say that you never want to focus on revenue. A lot of times you do, and it helps you make profit, right? But it is to say that sometimes it is about also looking at like what's working, what's not, where do I cut expenses? What am I paying for that's not giving me a return? Like nobody's talking about this stuff because it doesn't make our space money necessarily. Um, but it is really important as a business owner to be thinking about a lot are the things I'm spending on, are the things I'm spending time, energy, money, effort on actually giving me a return? And if not, that's what I have to look at. Like that's an opportunity, right? Um, Shantae said, good point. Hey, Morgan, I good to see you. Um, <laughs> worst nightmare. I, at least I'm assuming you meant like make a hundred K take home zero, right? Worst nightmare for sure. Um, it's a trap. Exactly. Michelle, it's always a trap. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, it is. It's so important. And I think it's important to say that like a lot of people are doing this in, in our space because I don't think that that gets said enough. So it's like, 
it keeps people continuing to do it. If you know what I mean, it's not like, Hey guys, a lot of people are like overspending and like, aren't actually taking home money. Make sure you're not one of them. Like we just need to say those things a little bit, because if not, I think it seems like, well, I'm the only one, or I just haven't invested in the right thing or whatever. And it's like, no, this has hap- is happening to a lot of people. Like actually in my, um, my millionaire makers mastermind, um, we were having like a, a, a thread conversation on, what are people keeping in their business savings accounts? And it was so impressive to hear like how they were thinking about it and how they had such strong, like six figure savings accounts for their business. Right. And then we were talking about how not normal that is in our space. Like so many people wouldn't sit on cash and like keep it in their business savings because they would feel like they have to reinvest constantly. It's like the only way. And so it was just cool to have them in there and be able to be like, look at how awesome this is that like y'all are like holding savings, holding profit. Like this is important shit, right? Um, Michelle said, I feel like the underlying theme here is intentionality. Spend money with intention, do things in your life with intention. Everything comes back to intention. I love that, Michelle. So it's not that you can't spend the hundred K when you make it, but know why you're doing it and have it be aligned with your values goals rather than spin just to spend and be left wondering how did I end up with zero? Exactly, Michelle. And it doesn't mean you never take make calculated investments or take calculated risks. Like I, I certainly do that in my business, right? And I certainly invest and I certainly invest big sometimes in ways that, you know, make sense or um, don't seem like they make sense at the time, but are really well thought out. And like, even if it is a risk, it's done with intention and knowing like, this is what I always say to my clients too, when they're thinking about maybe they're thinking about making like a big investment in ads or something. It's like, does this feel like a risk you can tolerate and that you can do with intention? And does it make sense? And does the data support it? And, and, and there's like a lot of questions (laughs) behind that to ask, right? Hey, Lacey, good to see you. Um, yeah, exactly. So much permission, but also to check back into like, what I think happens in our space is like, we're just not checking in, right? Because we're like, oh, I'm just supposed to invest. That's the only thing that helps me make more. And I think, you know, it's like, you are kind of doing it with intention, but it's not like well thought out for your business, for your own business. It's just sort of like broad scale. This is what I'm supposed to do to make more. So I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. And I think that that gets really tough. Um, Steph said, when you think about leaving your nine to five, you need to have a savings goal for your business, not just your living expenses said with love from a former business banker. Absolutely. Exactly. There's like a lot of moving parts in your financials, personally, professionally, all of that. And like taking that into consideration instead of feeling like every penny you make goes back in so you can hopefully make more is just not sustainable in my opinion. So, um, here's what I want to say is like, I think it it's about knowing what is working for you and being willing to make calculated investments because you know something works, if that makes sense, right? Um, I am considering a big investment right now in um, our business and we'll probably be making it. And it's almost entirely based on something that I know works. It's like, well, I know this works, so I'll just invest in this and do this, right? Like it it is a risk because all investments are a risk, but it's kind of not because I just like have enough data evidence proof experience to say that this is just going to work. And like, that's the place I think we need to be coming from and investing from a lot more often. Um, and there's another place I want to say I'm not too, but I don't want to miss your comments here. Michelle said, then there's me who left my nine to five without that, because it was time would not recommend to listen to Stephanie. (laughs) No, but that a very unhealthy gambling and lottery mentality is way too common in the coaching space. I totally agree. Totally agree with that. Um, so yeah, invest based on like what you know is working, like I was saying, or invest because you're like, I just really desire this level of support. And I know that that is what works for me to go. So it might be like, I'm investing in like, whatever, um, Facebook ads, cause I know my funnel is converting really well, super database, super strategic. Like I just know this works. I, I can literally calculate out how much, like I will probably get out of it because I know, um, or it might be something else like, um, 
you know, I know that when I feel super held and supported, I do really, really well. So I'm investing in this because it makes sense for me, right? Like a lot of my clients feel like that. It's not like they're investing in me because like they have to invest in me because it's the only way they're going to make more. It's not like that, right? It's like, I know that when I feel super held, have a partner, feel super supported and all of this, I always do better. So like, it might be really, really tangible data and it might be like, you just know you do better with support. I guess my clients have tangible data because of revenue share, but like, you know what I mean? Some of it can be a little bit more of like a feeling than just like hard numbers in a dashboard, but knowing is so important and knowing that you're doing it with intention is so important. And now we're curious. <laughs> oh, about the, um, investing. Yeah, no, happy to share that. Um, I think what we're going to start doing at a lit up life, like is we've just really never used, um, paid ads like ever. And we don't really have a reason to for all intents and purposes, right. Cause we have like a big wait list and everything right now, but what I do know works to have people like kind of come into my world and be in my space and want to get on the wait list is the podcast. So it just makes sense for us to start, um, running more ads to the podcast, like not even in terms of the fact that we'll see a return on that investment. So that's important to say in a sense, right. But in the sense of it's sort of like a good stability marker for our business of like, are we doing things that we know work that bring people in that create more interest? Do we need whatever a thousand people on the wait list right now? We really don't know. That's not the point is that it just comes back like that, but it is the point of like, maybe in two years, some of the people that found us are our next client. And so having that continuous growth, even though we don't need it for like monetary perspective right now is really important. And it's something I feel like is worth investing in. And also I just know the podcast works really well. So it doesn't feel like a gamble, you know? (laughs) <laughs> yes. Elisa always guesses, right? Um, yes. Yeah, totally. And I think people benefit from the podcast. I think, you know, our, um, our numbers continue to go up there and they continue to be more and more consistent. And so it's just like the place that makes sense to double down on growth in the business. Right. But here, here's an example that I want to say from that. Uh, <laughs> the podcast is literally so good. No pun intended. Thank you, Shante. Um, love hearing. Yes. So the other thing I want to say about that, just to like fully, like make that make sense. Um, cause I'm saying profit matters and then I'm like, oh, I'm investing in something and like, we probably won't make profit from it, but um, a couple of things. One is we do make profit from people being on our list. Right. And from people that eventually become clients and from getting the right people and right clients. in, so that's really, it is like a very long game, right? But it's still a long game. Like I never want to be in a position in my business where I'm doing that when the need is there. I have always been about that long game, right? Like I don't have to be on live stream every week. Why do I do it? Because I'm playing the long game. Like, yes, I have people on the wait list, but like I want to continue to build that and continue to build those relationships. Podcast is the best way for me to do that. So it's like, I have data, I know what's working, but also um, what I am going to be doing because of that is creating a new opt-in off the podcast. And then I'm going to test and tweak that. Like, I feel like um, I haven't created a new opt-in in like, I don't know, a century basically. (laughs) Um, And so, yeah, that's going to be something that I do off the podcast. And then I have enough people funneling through it to test, tweak, et cetera. So it's super long game, but that's sort of the point of some of this is like testing, tweaking data kind of is a long game. I feel like people aren't interested in data until it matters usually. Um, Yes. Yes, I totally am stuff. Yeah. Oh, manifesting and opening good. Hey, Liz. Um, Shante said, isn't your focus list growth? Exactly. And my focus this year is list growth. But instead, thank you, Shante, that you wrapped that perfectly for me. I forgot that part. So my focus this year is list growth. So instead of running it to an opt-in that I haven't updated in a century or running it to a new opt-in that I haven't tested yet, I'm going to run it to the podcast because it's tried and true and tested. And then I'm going to put something on the back of that from there. Does that make sense? So it's like doing it's, it really is quite strategic to know what works and do that stuff in your business. I feel like it would be so easy to be like, oh, I want list growth. Let me just like make up a new opt-in 
and throw money at that. Like that could work. Right. And I know my audience super, super well. So the likelihood that that goes well is probably decently high. Like it's not, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, a home run every time, but I would say like, I could probably make that happen and it would be good. But like, why, when I already have the thing that works and converts and that makes people stick around and follow me more and more and, 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 right. So it matters so much because when I spend money now, I know that it's going to be money well spent as opposed to being like, well, let's gamble on this new opt-in and see. And again, that's not like it, that's always terrible. It's just like, if you have something that, that allows you to not have to do that, why wouldn't you double down on what works? Right. Um, Michelle says, what I love about this is that if you just said, I'm running ads to the podcast from an outside perspective, it might be like, wait, why? But when you get into it, you're like, oh yes, this makes sense. And also so much per- permission to follow those intuitive pulls and they don't always make sense in the short term, 100%. Yep. Uh, thank you, Diane. Long-term profit. Exactly, Shantae. So it's like, we're going to profit more off those ads because we know it works as opposed to short-term testing a bunch of stuff that we don't know about, right? We're, we're just going to be more likely to potentially lose on. So um, yeah, that's just one example of something that we're doing. But um, I think another example that I'll just use is and I gave, I gave myself an idea here, but I can never remember my own notes. Um, oh, so like, here's something that came up recently for me is someone, one of my clients is like, oh, I'm going to invest in, um, a, like a person to help with engagement, like engagement strategy and stuff like that. Okay, great. I was like, awesome. Where are they? Like, as they do this, where are they sending people? And she was like, oh gosh, I don't know. I didn't really think about that. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> Do we have somewhere where they can send people that's converting really well? Like what, right? It's like, sometimes we just get so micro-focused in business where it's like, oh, I heard that I should be engaging more and that engagement's important. So I will go solve for that problem. And it's like, but what's like the bigger strategy of that? What's actually working? Because you can pay an engagement person all day long, but if they're not even sending them anywhere specifically, how do you know that that's going to work? Slash, I had another client who... Um, did something recently, not exactly an engagement person, but similar close. Um, and we were like, amazing. We want them to do this exact thing and go to this exact place. And we're tracking it in this exact way to know in 90 days, did that pay off? Right. So it's like, there's such different ways to approach investing. And I think that sometimes the latter seems way more intimidating, But honestly, it is how you keep profit. It's how you're like, I actually want this outcome, which I know leads me to this like level of profit or this bigger outcome that I want. And I'm going to be really strategic with making sure the places I'm spending my money is garnering that, right? Um, Yes. Um, what, what a cool way to identify your buyer's journey with those ads pulling in cold leads. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad it's helpful, Diane. Um, but yeah, it's like, I think one can just feel really intimidating. So we're like less likely to do it. But at the end of the day, like you want to know that where you're spending your money makes sense. Something I do that I feel like I've like gotten so many of my clients on board with, but most people are kind of like, at first is like my team tracks hours and I look at their hours and I look at like where that went in the business and like, not in a micromanagey way, but it helps me to know, like we spent whatever, I, I, this is not an exact number, you guys. So this is, I'm just making this up, but like we spent 10 hours on social media this week and it cost X. Do I feel like that return is there? Like there have been plenty of times in my business where I was like, oh, we're spending that much time on that. That return is not there at all. Fuck that. <laughs> like, let's stop that. And let's rededicate that energy over here where we know the return is. And so it's not micromanaging in the sense of trying to like nitpick, like how much time someone should be taking at something, but it is managing our spend. It is managing where team time and money or ultimately business, business money is going. So we can know if that's worth it. I feel like so few entrepreneurs do that. Um, and are so resistant to seeming like they're a micromanaging team or whatever. But I think when you can help your team say like, 
hey, this is how I have like the overview as a CEO. This is how I can continue to make sure that we have really great profit so that you guys always have a job and can get raises and all of those things. Like people understand that fundamentally. It's like our job to help them understand that, but it's so important to know where these things are going so that you know if it's actually worth it, right? Um, Michelle said, it reminds me of building a short-term savings account where maybe you're making 3.5% interest, but it's immediately accessible versus longer term investments that will have a bigger return. 100%. Um, Michelle said, and once you have the savings account, the next step is truly focused on their longer term investments. Love seeing this in context of the business. Exactly. Um, I'm curious, are you doing ads over, for example, podcast interviews for time reasons or something? Are you doing ads over, for example, podcasts? Oh, guest podcast interviews. Um, yeah, it's just literally is not built like that, Kristen. Honestly, I'm like, I'm all about guest podcast um, in terms of um, other people like doing, having guests as part of their strategy. For me though, like literally it's just not built like that. It's never how it's functioned and I think it would just feel really weird and off to all of a sudden have like a bunch of guests on. So, um, that's just not something I do in terms of me going on other people's podcasts, definitely just more of a time thing. Like I'll do that sometimes I actually have a, I think I had one last week and I actually have one this week, I think. Um, but it's certainly not something I would commit to like weekly typically or anything like that. So yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah. Okay. Good. I think I just answered that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it is a good strategy, but yeah, I, at this juncture in my life, business and mama hood stage, I would much rather throw some money at an ad to be honest with you, <laughs> but I do love them when I do them. It's just like a time thing. Um, so what else was I going to say about that? Oh yeah. So I think it's just like seeing like there are different paths, like, yes, you can just invest and like, see what happens, but like typically that's just going to cost you more money and it's going to make you feel like you don't know if that's working or not. So then you go invest in the next thing. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people too. It's like they invest in stuff and it doesn't like, you know, shit's not blowing up like crazy. So they're like, okay, let me go invest in something else and something else and something else because they still never figured out what was working about something, what wasn't. And so they just keep adding more things, more expenses, and it becomes completely unsustainable to the point where they're like running these huge businesses and not taking a lot home at all. Um, is there a new mini series brewing there yet? I believe you mentioned having the next coachy be the golden ticket person. We do have our next coachy. We do not have a new mini series, but I'm open if one decides to land. <laughs> but yes, we do have our new coach E who I think we're going to introduce y'all to in I think the very, very beginning of May. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the very beginning of May. Yeah. Um, Kate said, this is where I get caught up having process to look at what is working. Yeah, totally. I mean, this is honestly why I'm obsessed with dateable. Like I, I think Jen said this on, um, our podcast or oh my God, podcast on the brain, on our live stream last week as she said that when she started working with me, I was the first coach that ever asked her like data stuff. Like I was, you know, was the first one that ever questioned that, which to me is fucking nuts, right? Like it's so crazy to me that like most of us aren't getting asked that question or having that conversation. And so I'd been doing that for years, asking my clients like all of these things. Um, it was just harder because they didn't have really like as many ways to find it, collate it, um, have access to it or whatever. And so that's why I partner with Jen and created Datable because I'm like just so in belief that having access to these kinds of things is super important. So obviously Kate, I'm biased, but I would say like, yeah, like get in measure, maximize and build your dashboards, right? Like that's the easiest, fastest, quickest way to see what's working and what's not is to be able to go, oh, these emails are working and these aren't. These are our sales are coming from. These traffic sources are sending us the most clients, et cetera, et cetera. And that way, when you test stuff, you can obviously see that happen too, right? Like um, the rage room. Oh my God. So good. <laughs> New, oh, a data series. That's interesting, Michelle. Wait, hold on. You guys. I have to must make notes, a mini series. 
Okay, I'm gonna write these down. Um, okay, you guys are great. Um, genius idea, I'd love to hear that. Which one, Alessia? Rage room, data, both. <laughs> um, and I know, obviously, Kate, there are plenty of other ways we could talk about it too, but um, I, I really do feel like having dashboards is the best thing. Like Jen and I are kind of in this right now, te technically because, well, we're always in it, but um, right now we have special bonuses for measure and maximize that. And on April 2nd, which I'll tell you guys about those in a little bit, but um, I should probably write that down. <laughs> um, help me remember y'all. Um, but it's so helpful to just look like I literally get our dashboards emailed to me every single day and look at them and go, what's working? What's not? What should we do more of? Like, it takes me five minutes. I looked this morning, I text Jen something and I was like, Hey, do you see this in the same way I do? I think we got to do this. And she was like, Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like so simple to just have that touch point with your business that quickly every day. And I don't mean that you would necessarily make adjustments every day. In fact, I would say, don't, please don't. <laughs> but um, especially when you're like in the middle of like a launch or whatever, it's so useful to have those, but also long-term it's really useful to have those two, because you can just know overall what's working. But some of the things I was saying, like about, um, the, uh, the podcast, like we just track our podcast stats in a spreadsheet. And so that's one way I know. Um, and then also like when I do applications from the wait list and ask people like where they found me or like how they connected with me, you know, podcast is like a huge one. So some of it's not just something that's coming from like a dashboard, but, um, those are other ways that we're like finding that out is just like keeping tabs on asking the right questions to our audience. And as well as, um, yeah, like looking at our podcast numbers, if you have a podcast, um, Ooh, coachy catch up. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. That's such a good one. You guys, these are so good. Keep them coming. You got rooted in measure and maximize off. We're so happy to have you, Diane. Um, dashboards. Oh, yes. I, I feel like I say this as though everyone like knows this, but um, let me see if I can just find them for y'all really quick. But yeah, so in measure and maximize, basically what we help you do is build four dashboards, it's really five, but four dashboards in your business um, so that you can just see things very quickly. Um I'm going to send you guys examples or post examples of them really, really quick. Cause I think it's really helpful. Um, but, uh, sample. Cool. I think I found it. Um, it's so useful to have these at, there we go. Mm. Lisey, you did. I replied to you. If you didn't get it, let me know. I can resend it, but we can talk about that for sure. Um, oh no, Michelle just got another cavity filled. Um, so oops, I just, okay. I just posted, um, posted it. So these are just examples, um, of what some of the dashboards look like that you would build. But so Datable is about not just helping you like find the data, but create like a really accessible way to get it long-term. Um, and so it's something that's just showing up. You can, you don't have to have it in your inbox every day. I just have a program like that. Cause I like it, but it's something that's just like, you could literally click and know everything that's going on in your business. So we call them dashboards. Cause it's sort of like how you're going to see that. Um, same here from a former coach I worked with. I ended up listening to the Do the Work mini series and I found you there. Oh, so good. That's so helpful, Asia. Thank you. Oh, good. You did get it. You're knee deep in UTM. So good stuff. That's so exciting. Um, so yeah, if you click on that sample link, you'll just see what I mean by dashboard. But it's so useful. Like I'll just pull ours up really quick and just tell you like some of the stuff I looked at this morning that was helpful. Um in terms of like knowing what's working and what's not. If you guys hate this, by the way, feel free to be like, can we move on from this conversation? <laughs> but um, like this morning I looked and I was able to see, okay, how many people are taking us up on VIP plan? Like the, um, like the larger um, 
uh, offer or standard. Okay. Amazing. So I know like those are about equal. So that's really helpful for me to see. Then I was able to see how many people were reviewing the sales page, then how many people went to check out and then how many people purchased. It's really interesting because for a while, our sales page was tracking that a ton of people were adding to check out and not purchase. Well, I mean, people were purchasing, but like the amount of people adding to check out compared to the amount of people purchasing was really big. So we were like, Hey, this is a gap we have to solve. And I can see from looking at it now, like that's getting better. Like the amount of people viewing checkout, moving to purchase is getting a little bit better, which is exciting for us. I can see that, um, of the people who are buying about 50% are coming from like organic social traffic and about 50% are buying through our email list. That's really helpful for me to know both are working. Like there's not much I'm going to change there. Um, I can see how many people um, are, how people are moving on the sales page. That's something I'm probably going to look at a little bit more. It seems like people are jumping earlier on the sales page than I'd want them to. So that's something I'm going to look at. It's probably not helpful because y'all can't see it at this moment. <laughs> or Shantae said, this is great. Um, Tao said, as a bookkeeper and CPA, I love that you touch on this topic. We'll catch up on the replay to see a coach's perspective. Oh, so good. Thank you. But Anyway, this is sort of off the revenue and profit thing, but the point is, is like, I can just see all of that, the touch of my fingertips this morning kind of thing, right? It's so easy. It's so useful. And it's what helps me know what's working and what's not. So it's like, does it make sense for us to continue to double down on our email strategy? Yeah. 50% of our sales are coming from there. Does it make sense for us to continue what we're doing on social? Yes. 50% of our sales are coming from there. How do we like work on both of those to make it better? Like, things like this matter. Um, slash I'm not like running out and like throwing ads at something or investing in all of these other ways because I can see what's happening and what actually needs to be tweaked and what's working. Like biggest thing that might need to be tweaked right now is like they were losing people earlier on the sales page than I would like, like, okay, amazing. I can work with that. Um, but what I find to be true is for most people in most launches, a couple things are working really well and they could ditch the rest, but they're paying for all of it, right? And so that's why I want to say like, know what works, know what's happening in your business because that's how you not only save money, but actually can make more. So you save money, not spending on the wrong things, but you make more because then you spend your time, energy, and money on the right things. And that's where it really is a game changer. Again, it's not just like, how do you spend as little as possible? It's like, how do you know reliably that the things you're spending on actually are going to get you results? If you don't know that, I would be very careful spending on that. Like it's all such a gamble at that point. Um, Michelle said, my brain is currently going down rabbit holes for a mini series. Latest one, talk data to me. Oh my gosh, we'll, we'll copy that one, Michelle. I love it. Bringing sexy back to your bit. Oh my God, so funny. Okay. I. Um, on it. Let me put that on my list. Okay. It's on the list. Um, uh, maybe I can hire someone to set up dashboards for me. Yeah. Lisa, you absolutely can hire someone to set up dashboards for you. We have like some of our students, we, um, can recommend, um, Jen might fully kill me if I say this, but like Jen, under certain circumstances, Jen and I, um, we'll build them for you. So, um, yeah, reach out to me if that's the avenue you want to go. I will say that it's obviously significantly more expensive to have them built for you versus to measure maximize is 1297 to have them built for you is I would say in the range of five to 10, probably on the higher side. So it's definitely more of an investment to have someone do it, but it's totally possible. Um, Shantae said quite literally, quite literally maximizing your profit. Exactly. Um, a discussion around sales page psychology data is so interesting. What percent of people like me will not read through a whole sales page before deciding it's a go or not go? Yeah. I think a lot of people don't read the full sales page for sure, but we can add that. I'll add that to the list too stuff. Mm, yes, it is an option. Exactly. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think the point here that I want to keep making is like, keep looking at what's working and not working in your business. And don't be afraid to let go of something if it's not showing you data that it works. Now, I'm not saying in 30 days, but if you've been trying something consistently over time and you're seeing that, whatever, let's just make up some stories here. If you're seeing that, like you're paying, a. um, 
copywriter content person, you know, thousands of dollars to write email newsletters and they're just not converting or email uh, sales emails that are just not working. Like, but all of your sales are coming from Instagram. You could just do something about that. You could stop paying that. You could be repurposing your Instagram posts, your email list and be doubling down on what's working and making way more there. That's just an example, right? But the point is there is a way to get results and have profit. (laughs) And it's based entirely upon knowing what's working, knowing what's worth your time, knowing what's worth your money and putting your attention there. And the other thing that I want to say about this that I feel like is like a, an interesting concept is that most people, especially with data, I feel like think they should wait. Like they think it's for people that are making like a thousand course sales a month. And in some ways it is like, if you're making a thousand course sales a month, you, you for sure fucking need data. Like you're insane. (laughs) If you're not um, using data, one of my clients was, has been crushing it. She had her first million dollar year last year. And at the beginning of the the year this year, Jen and I were just like, you have, like, you have to have a dashboard. This is insane. (laughs) Like, like we, we cannot stand for this a moment longer. Like you have to have this. Right. So yes. And when you're further along, it matters certainly, but people want data when it's too late, almost, you know what I mean? Where it's like when shit's hitting the fan and they're like, Oh my God, I like need to know this. And I think Jen said this last week, but it's really hard to like retroactively pull stuff. I mean, in some cases it's almost impossible unless like you've had like a tracking mechanism on your site. Right. But start this early. I feel the same way about data that I do about team stuff is like, do it before you think you absolutely need it. If you wait to hire a team until you need it, it's going to be a shit show because you're trying to onboard a team when you like desperately need a team and that never ever goes well, (laughs) right? And the same is true with data. Don't wait until you're like, oh my God, I like need the data for this to know what's working. You're on such a lag there, right? What you need is to do it early so that it's collecting so that when you need it, you have access to it. That is the most important thing you can do. Again, even if you're like, well, I'm just filling my one-on-one right now. Amazing. Build data off of that and then leverage that to go launch your program or whatever. You are going to be light years ahead. Um, Michelle said, every time I hear you talk about data, my brain makes it some big complicated thing because I have a one-on-one practice, but there's not a ton of traffic data coming in, and yet I realized I actually use it all the time to make decisions. There's just no dashboard yet. Exactly, Michelle. I feel like I'm constantly asking you about data in your business. We're constantly looking at that. It's so relevant and so important. I'm rarely helping a client make a decision where there's not some question about that. Do they all have to have a perfect dashboard for it? No. Does it make it easier? Quite honestly, yes. <laughs> right? But it's not like the end all be all requirement, but it's still like, Don't make decisions in your business without having that to back you. I feel like our industry as a whole wants you to make decisions in your business without that Um, because it's how people keep, you know, buying a million courses and a million things, right? But honestly, like it, it should be your guiding light even if you have three clients, like you still have data from those three clients. Where did they find you? How did they find you? What made them buy? How long have they been following you? What specifically converted them? Like knowing all of those things off of even three clients can change your entire business, right? It really, really can. Um, Mary said data is so important, totally. Um, I did set up my Google Analytics. Finally, big win. That's awesome, Michelle. Um, Sometimes I just feel my business is not big enough yet for me to be worrying about data gathering. I hear that. I really do. And it's one of those things where it's like important (laughs) or what's that, what's that, like, four square thing where it's like, it's important, but not urgent. I think at a certain point in your business is how it feels. But honestly, it's, I really think it's always important. Like to me, it's like, oh, what, when someone says, and I'm not picking on you, Mary at all. Like everyone says that by the way, so it's totally fine. But when someone's like, well, I don't need data yet in my business. I'm like, well, how are you going to grow though? <laughs> like, right. Like I'm like, oh, so you're going to like, you'll grow without it and then you'll need it. Like to to me, that is the path to growth in many ways. So I hear you. And I think like, you know, 
nobody has to jump in before they're ready. But also I, I think it's so helpful to have earlier than you think. And it's also what I think keeps a lot of people out of that rabbit hole of getting to a point where they've just spent all of their revenue and not had any profit because especially at the beginning is when it's easiest to fall into that trap, right? Of like make, spend, make, spend, make, spend. So at the beginning, having data that at least tells you the right places to spend, I actually think is super, super important and helpful. Um, Cause I think that's where it's easiest to kind of get trapped in all of that. But again, nobody has to do it before they're ready. I think one thing I want to speak to is how, um, Oh yeah. I love that stuff. You got to know your numbers to grow your numbers. Perfectly said. So good. Um, one thing I really want to speak to too, is, you know, the fact that when we're, when we're thinking of data in such a complicated way, like Michelle was saying, I feel like I'm trying to think of how I want to articulate this. I'm not trying to be like cautious of how I say it. I'm just trying to like translate what's in my brain, but I feel like it's just this way that sometimes we as women business owners can keep ourselves stuck is to feel like, oh, that's like complicated or out of my league or like too much or whatever. And I, I do think that we have to know our limits and know what works for us when it doesn't kind of how earlier I was like, hey, I'd rather put money toward ads than be a guest on a million podcasts right now. Like we all have to have like our boundaries and our capacity and all of that. So with that in mind, but I feel like this is almost a way that like women in our space stay stuck or stay investing in all of this, like really like esoteric kind of like energetic, um, only energetic stuff is because like the, like we think it's too complicated. So we're like, Oh, I'll go do this. But I know so many people in our space that have been like really harmed and disappointed by some of that. Um, because it felt like the better, easier path. And so I just want to name that like, it can be challenging at first to be like, okay, this is new. I have to get my brain around this. I have to learn a new thing, but everything in your business was that at first, right? Instagram was that at first. Social media was that at first. Like all of it takes that like, okay, this is a whole new way of thinking about things. Like, let me jump on board here. But I think that it's sort of like, it, imagine how different our space would be if more women were using data. Like I'm not all about the like bro marketing thing, but they got data. <laughs> they got it down. Right. And a lot of them make a shitload of money because of it. And so imagine if like all of us were able to use it for good and not evil, so to speak. And in a way that wasn't just like, okay, well, since I can't have that, I guess I just have to like go over here and keep buying these like only spiritual kind of things. And again, I'm not against those. I just think that like, it can be misleading to say that that's the only thing when most of the people selling that are also like really strategic with like their marketing and content and social and statistics, you know what I mean? So um, to me, it's like, yes, it is a thing that you're going to have to like get over and get your brain around. But I think like for women to step more into that is so, so valuable. And I also think like, it's not really any more complicated than like most of the other things we've had to like step into in business at one point or another, right? Um, yes, yes, good, Mary, I love that. Yes, set up Google Analytics to start. That's so important. It's like the foundation of everything, just get that up, yes. Um, interesting parallel here with the golden ticket, empowering women business owners to take up space in all the things, not just one or the other. In other words, in so many words and in lazy words, it gets to be both. Exactly, Shante. Exactly. Oh my God, I love it. As a self-identifying witch, we also keep data, right? Like what spells worked when, et cetera. It's totally both. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. It's so both, right? Like I the bonus for um our dateable launch right now that I'm teaching, Jen's teaching one on chat GPT, which is going to be insane because she's like the ultimate chat GPT user in every way imaginable. But um, the one I'm teaching is on data mindset and it's about the both, right? Like it's exactly what you're saying, Shantae. It's like, not like we don't use mindset or energy. Like a freaking course we do. It's so important. Like our numbers should not limit us, right? So the, the training I'm doing is about defying industry norms by using mindset along with your data. Like, I think when those two come together, it's insane. And like you're saying with spells and stuff, like you have to know what's working and what's like, 
like making sense there and you have to have the magic behind it. And I think this is it. So it's like, that's why I'm teaching that. Cause I feel like I've heard so many people that feel like it's almost like intuition or data magic or data. And it's like both, if you use both, you get to be a witch. Like it's, it's pretty much the gist, right? Instead of feeling like you're just supposed to use one. And if you incorporate the other, something's wrong. Like I'm still all mindset all day. Like if you ask me, like, do I think mindset or data is the most important? I'd honestly still pick mindset. But (laughs) I think that if you really want to get good results, it's both together. And that's the thing. Um, Yep. Um, Especially to see Jen and her chat GBT genius as a fellow chat GBT nerd. Although I feel like my MO is more in life hacking chat GPT. Yes. Jen is going to crush the chat GPT training. She told me some of what she was planning and I was like, holy crap. It's so good. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. You had me at which now I'm all in. Oh my gosh. Shante is so good. You just got Diane sold. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, I feel like we kind of like deviated a little bit today, but it is the, it is the point of like, these can live together. You can have revenue and profit. You can be a witch and use data. You can have magic and data, intuition and data, but you still need this thing over here that's telling you what's working, that's pointing you in the right direction, that's creating a feedback loop. Like the fact that in our so many of our businesses, the feedback loop just isn't there. Like for my podcast, right? So Yes, the feedback loops there in terms of like people telling me they enjoy it and stuff like that. But like to be able to see the numbers and look at what's working is so important because I'm not like live. I'm not like this. It's just like people listen, right? Like that is so crucial to me knowing next steps, what feels good, all of that kind of stuff. So just an example, but it's like these things always live together. And if you're using both, you're capitalizing on it the most. So absolutely so important. So important. Same with revenue and profit in terms of know how to make more, but also know where to cut expenses. It's not either, or it's not like you're always saving or you're always spending. It's like you always both, where's your opportunity to cut expenses? What is your data telling you you're spending on that you don't need to be spending on slash where's your opportunity to like double down and improve like all together the same thing. So I think this is like so helpful. I love that you like landed the lane for us on that, like both, both, both know how, how and where to spend, not just always spend more. Right. Um, <laughs> Michelle can't stop with the mini series burned in the stake dead. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. Um, but yeah, so If you do want to join us, um, Jen, like I was saying, Jen is, is doing the amazing chat GPT training live. I'm doing, um, uh, everybody loves it. I'm doing, um, the defying industry norm mindset training, um, for anybody who joins us in measure and maximize by April 2nd. So I'll put the link to measure and maximize. I'll put the sample dashboards again. If you guys kind of like want to see what you'll be building, If you guys have questions on this, feel free to personally reach out to me, like happy to answer any questions. I know it can be really intimidating and happy to just be as honest with you as I possibly can about what the answers are to your questions, if it's right for you, all of those things. Um, But we would love to have you join us. The other thing too, is that um, you basically get coaching calls with me if you jump in there. Um, So every month I do a date and night call. You get it? Date night, date and night. It's not really at night. It's at 3 p.m., but I had to call it that. Um, I do a day to night call um, and you can bring all your questions. So um, like, obviously with data is great, but that's how I coach my clients anyway. Like if you're going to be like, hey, should I do this or this? I'm going to be like, what does your data say? Um, But yeah, it's just like an open um, business coaching session. And so if you've been interested in getting some coaching from me, that's a good way to do it too. And honestly, I just think we're priced so well. I'm just going to be honest about that. For $12.97, being able to like have something that tells you like, like it's, it's the investment that makes all of your other investments make sense, right? $12.97 to know if the next thing you're investing in is the right thing. If you're spending your time in the right place, if you're spending your energy in the right place, like to me, I like, 
I feel like it should be so much more, but obviously we don't want it to be more because we want it to be so accessible to people, which is like really the point, like Jen's good in her, um, her position. I am good at a lot of life. Like we're not like trying to be like, okay, this needs to be, you know, $10,000. But honestly, I think the value is more than there. 1297 is like, I feel like nobody does anything for 1297 in our space anymore, which is kind of like scary and ridiculous. But um, yeah, to me, 1297 to like be able to learn from your own business is insane. So we would love to have you. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to drop them here. Personally, reach out to me, email me, um, Lacey at a lot of life.com. Happy to answer our bonuses. I think expire April 2nd. I can't remember what time, but sales page says somewhere in there. Um, so yeah, I want to help you make more money, but mostly I want to help you make more profit. That is what I'm obsessed with. My clients know that, um, I want your business to feel good to you. I mean, obviously it's called a lit up life because I literally want you to have a lot of life, which equals taking home profit and not none. So, um, would love to have you guys there. If you want, um, if you want that in your own world and you want a vehicle to do that, you know what I mean? Again, it's not like I, I, to be clear, it's not like it's the only thing you'll ever need to invest in. It's just the thing that's going to make you feel confident and certain in all your other investments. And that for me is like life-changing. Um, And I also think it really helps your mindset to be able to start looking at your business from this neutral way of like, oh, I just need to tweak how long people are staying on the sales page instead of like, I suck and nobody wants coaching from me. Like, do you know what I mean? Such a different way to look at things. So I could go on and on about it all day. I won't because I appreciate y'all's time today. But thank you for being here. Thank you for listening again here for any questions or support. I know this is a really intimidating topic that I will continue to shop from the rooftops until it is less intimidating. Um, but just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. Also, I don't think I said this, um, but if you were here and comment today, well, we're giving away a hundred dollar gift card. I apologize. I don't think I said that at all, but if you were here, if you make any kind of comment, we just do that to say thank you. And we love you. And we appreciate you listening and spending your time with us. So hope that you guys have a beautiful week. Also, Um, Before I forget, I don't have it yet, but I am going to put out a very, very quick questionnaire that I'd be so interested in y'all answering in the next week or so. And I'm going to give away um, a free one-on-one session to someone who does. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in connecting one-on-one with me, Um, I would so, so, so appreciate that. I feel like you guys gave me so much good market research of the mini series ideas today. So anyway, be on the lookout for that too. And I love you guys. I appreciate you. You're the best and I hope you have a good week. All right. Bye y'all.